Hello, BAME Farm fans. Here we have the 802 Unisystem. Uh, we'll get a start sometimes. It is a bit cold-blooded. Um, and we'll take a quick walk around, but really we're here to start deconstructing it to put the husking bed on it. Um, I've already pulled one clip. There's a pin back here. It's easier to see on the other side, but I'll do that on the other side of the walk around. It's got a newer gray color head. The 767 chopper is not so new. It's like we got three generations of Unisystem going. Where the head's the newest, Second newest is a power unit, I'd say the chopper is the oldest. But, and I'll remember to put a link here. We saw this, this was the neighbor's chopper that we watched out in that field across the street a couple years ago. It's got four wheel drive, incredibly important. 426 Alice. Seems to run okay, and it's straight piped. It'll be just, uh, just like listening to the old 1466. I got the head set up on pallets and I already pulled this pin on the other side. It looks like the uh, implement clutch is a little touchy. Now hopefully with driving forward we will release the pressure on this block and we can get the pin to fall out. I've already taken the drive chain off. Um, so let's see what we can do. The battery will probably run out on me. So we'll try to creep forward a wee bit. There we go. Come on, stay up here. Now one fun thing about the hydrostat is that when you try to use reverse, it's got a safety spring such that... Ah, I hope I don't need two people. Or we can just get a hammer and drive it out of there. Okay, but when you push the hydro lever for reverse, there's a spring that pushes it back to neutral, so you have to be actively wanting to back up. That is a very useful feature, especially when you got a wagon hook back there, you can't back up forever. Uh, and it may help, I may need to put a board out front, I did notice, because it does lean back. Maybe we'll see if I can't find a two by four. I guess I've picked this as the slab of concrete I'm going to use to pull the chopper off. And I will probably use the forklift on the back of the tractor to move it wherever out of the way and hopefully load it on some lucky new owner's trailer real soon. Yep, the chopper, the head, there's actually two more heads for parts that go with this. Uh, but that's not why we're here. We're trying to get this thing off so we can put the picker on. Finally, eventually. Yeah. Well, what a sight. The hydro's out. I'm kind of using it to cherry pick the feeder house and lift it up. And maybe we'll just shut the hydro off here a second. Okay, quick peace and quiet. I'm using the hydro to cherry pick the feeder house out front uh, because I took the head off and not the feeder house and I don't feel like disassembling any more than I have to. So what do we have to do to get the chopper off? The power unit. There was a bolt down low that is removed. See that threaded rod that goes to the spring that holds the tensioner pulley uh, to drive the whole machine. And the belts are off and that belt is off. And that belt comes back here for the blower. To get that loose, I spent a bunch of time with a ratchet turning that. And maybe had to use something to hold the threaded rod from turning, like a pipe wrench. Vice grips didn't cut it. Um, had to use a jack because this one didn't twist um, to get enough clearance right there to drive away. Underneath, luckily, the chopper has its own jack stand. This arm holds it up 
and there's two uh, turnbuckles to put down the big foot to lift it up and it's hard to see in the darkness but I think we have enough clearance um, now that all sounds really quick but when you don't know what you're doing you don't have a book and what tools you exactly need it, it still takes some time unfortunately um, so I think that is everything the belts the bolt there's actually two bolts up front but it only had one uh, we can kind of see where one should be I'll probably have to give this an extra lift so we'll turn the hydro back on but we can see one of these bolts over here that go through you can kind of see that's where it's supposed to go through and it goes through the frame and comes out in the abyss way beyond the hydro pump it only had one so those are gone as best as I know we are free enough to drive away and hopefully this thing can make a really tight turn that way I guess to the right hmm okay let's start the loader back up make sure we're high enough I'm sure we'll have to lift it of course it would be good to have a nice quiet start of the power unit because I don't know if I've gotten that on camera yet but this has already been started for the day so it's warm it's a wee bit cold-blooded as you can tell <sighs> need to uh, clean in here I left the window down while we were cleaning out the grain bin okay key I don't have enough hands for all this key starter button and the hydro I might be able this is a oil safety switch I can just use my knee to hold that and Gotta look through two windows. Okay, we have enough oil pressure. That's just an oil pressure switch. Oil pressure gauge is coming up. So we know that works. And either the fuel gauge is stuck on full or there's fuel. Not sure which. So theoretically, we should be able to creep forward. And I probably need to make sure the wheel is turned. And we can't see it all the way to the left. It's gonna be hard not moving. Yeah. Well, that wheel, if you can see around the blower there, I have a sliding window, who am I kidding? It looks like we got a pretty good turn. That's maxing out up here. So let's try to creep forward. Chopper staying put. Probably gonna have to jockey this a bit. Because I think in three, two, one, we can get off and look for entertainment's sake. Now yeah, we're not hitting, but we're getting close, but good thing we got off to save our hose. That is the power for the elevator, it's hydraulic check to make sure we've got good separation we may hit on we may touch I don't know what to do about that the belts are coming with us but we're free enough and this is gonna be in the way uh, well I'll think of something. to touching more separation I don't know I'm about ready just to go get uh, the forklift okay we gotta have a planning meeting I gotta figure out what I'm doing with life right now well I now have two tractors at the 10 with the forklift lift in the back the loaders lift in the front 
and I think I finally have enough clearance to try to get this thing out of here. Not that we can see much, because it's dark. But we have a lot of clearance now. That tire can get free, so hopefully we can just go straight, get out of here, and we're done. And we can't see anything in the cab anyways, because, you know, it's dark. But let's find out what lights do work. Ah, we have some front lights. And some lights out the back. You, I don't, yeah, you can kind of see that light's coming from up here. So a few of them work, that's fantastic. Okay, let's try to creep ever so gently. some weight. Ah. Okay, let's see how much more lift capacity we have. Come on, bucket loader. Okay, time to try that creep again. The back is free. They're all free. As I left enough. Okay, I don't like doing that, but we did it. We were, shoot. Come on. Don't fall off the forks. Number one rule of this. Come on. Something is rubbing, I can tell. Come on, back wheel. You can do it. Back wheel's almost free. Time for another check. <laughs> That's not gonna clear and we're out of lift. But I can drive. I can move everything this way slowly. That's how I got here is I crept everything back. I can go the other way. A whole foot. Kinda, except for the jack being there. I wish I could just twist this whole thing a bunch. Well, this is what it came to. I had to reposition the chain a little bit. It's kind of had to set that on the tire nicely. And uh, I think we have enough clearance. Let's get away while we can. Oh, it's still dark in here. That's why we're looking out the handy dandy window into the darkness anyways, and hopefully there's something to see. Okay. It's not shaking or jiggling like we're touching. We have gotta get that rear tire to clear the jack. I didn't realize that. Uh, maybe we caught a tread on the tire. We just did again. Oh, hell. Yeah, we are catching treads out there just a little bit with just a little tickle because we are free in a way that rear tire cleared those jacks let's get out of here quick go 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 and i know it's dark i'm sorry tell the sun to stay here it's too busy running grain this morning to uh have too much fun with this okay let's get ourselves more orientated away from this mess. It's lovely, reversing this requires active touch. That if you let go, it wants to stop. There's the power unit all by itself. There's the chopper hanging in midair. And I really hope that I can set it down ever so nicely. Here is a chopper unit, all free by itself, standing alone on its stands, doing whatever it does. Looks like it's had a new band put on on the blower. So that's uh, 
good for somebody. Won't start shooting out little bits of silage somewhere. Kind of just set that access panel back in place. Um, it's there. It's orange-ish. 40 years old. A silage chopping technology. I guess I should close this panel. I lifted that up to use something as an anchor point in here. That'd be good right there. That's, that's a nice hole to just kind of chain to and lift. Looks like we got a plug in for some electrical bits. To turn the uh, spout back here. Looks like it is set in a very straight back position. This looks like it's either bigger or more clearance when it's not on the mule. Probably because we can see underneath it better with the jack stands. Yep, so if anybody wants it, it needs a new home and it's going as a package deal with the head and the two parts heads. Well, in the daylight, it looks a little naked. Leaving my cart sit everywhere. Got some schmutz to clean off there. Something was like falling out the bottom of the chopper. Hopefully those two wires are connected okay there. Maybe it's like a sensor, oil sensor or something for the transmission. At least we can get to this, we can check oil on the transmission. That brake got toasty once. And while we're here, I need to work on the cylinder or the valve lift because what is that? I did not notice that before. Is a pop-off pressure relief or something? You see that thing shoot through the front window? You got a problem? Hmm. Interesting. Did not notice that before. See all the stuff you find when there's not a machine sitting here. Um, but yeah, the cylinders, I need to switch them over to one of the auxiliary valves um, because they slowly leak down, which makes me think that specific valve for the lift cylinders out here um, maybe a little bit worn or something somebody huh, did notice that somebody had to cut something there and this is a really wide trough like i guess the combines or some of the newer combines are really wide to sit there Looks a lot like the gas one. We can see that a little better now, how to tighten this spring. I'm probably gonna have to take this off. That's just extra uh, to run and go back to the blower. Had to do a little bit of welding to the frame. It was cracked. It was welded and then welded uh, again uh, before. And well, we welded the crack in and by we, I mean, I had somebody uh, trade some old rusty junk I had that they really wanted and apparently they're pretty good with a welder um, looks like it'll hold don't see any blow through holes so that is that is good it's not factory uh, and it's not too easily seen now the bright yellow paint gives it away but it's rust oleum so it shouldn't rust you can see this side of the 426 it's uh there's not much over here see they were smart all the stuff you really need to get to except for maybe the starter is on this side like the injection pump alternator all the filters turbo i don't know if alice engines were set up this good originally or maybe a uh, new idea coerced them to move a few things now yeah, the only thing that would be movable would maybe be the turbo side to side but it still has to sit on top of your exhaust manifold so really it's probably probably just happened to fit how they needed it Well, sometime we're going to get back to putting that husking bed on, but today we're shelling corn.